first I just want to say right off the back, my name is Tyrone Muhammad. I'm a funeral director here in New Jersey, and I'm going to cut straight to the chase. I ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. I ain't going to give you a watered down version. I ain't going to tell you something that's just popular. No, I'm going to give it to you real. If you ain't hear from nobody else that's telling you the realness, you ain't hear from nobody else. As a funeral director, you, you um, want to talk to those who just loving these brothers, these rappers. In fact, rappers such as Rick Ross, rappers such as Lil Wayne, those are out there having you fall in love with that nonsense, having fall in love with thinking that that's reality when they're talking about violence. And but they live another than that. See, they walking around with bodyguards and etc. And they got you out here gang banging, got you out here shooting and killing one another. But listen, all that the reality of it is, is when I see you. When I see you, it's over. It's over. Why? You're dead. You're gone. And, no, and, you're, and you're dead because of foolishness, right? And you come in here all shot up, bullet holes everywhere. Um, you have, you've been to the medical examiner. The medical examiner butch you up, chop you all up, gut you open, take all your heart, your organs, your, your, your liver, your kidneys, your intestines. They remove your brain, gut you out. A guy cut you out, now what happens now? You leave off a coal environment there, you come to the funeral home, we put you on the coal embalming table. And while you're on that coal embalming table, we put coal embalming fluid in you, a cold water. See what I'm saying? And as, after all that, we watching your cold blood run down the tables. Why? Because you fell in love with a fantasy. You, you fell in love with something that wasn't even real. See, they got, they got you buying their products, and they not even living that. They not even living that lifestyle. So they, they got you all thinking that that's real. No, that ain't real. Real is when your mother is before me. Real is when your mother can't afford to pay for your funeral. Real is when I got a patch of those bullet holes, them bullet wounds on you. See, that's real. See, see, that's real. See, Rick Ross ain't here to pay for your funeral. Rick Ross, Little Wayne and them ain't here to help your mother buy a casket to put you on the ground. No, it's your poor mother. See what I'm saying? I'm sick of it, man. Ain't, ain't, no, ain't no damn outcry. Ain't, ain't nobody fed up. Ain't nobody care about you. Your homies don't give a damn about you. Why is that? Yeah, they homies on the street. But when it's, come, when it's time to come in here to pay that bill, ain't nobody in here with your mother. Your mother in here by herself, putting her little pennies, her nickels, and her dimes, and her hard-earned dollars here to put you at rest for some foolishness. Think that over, man. Think it over. I mean, I don't know nobody that want to rush to a grave. I, don't, I, I just can't even see somebody trying to rush to get into a casket. To be down. Down for what, man? Think that over. Down for what? And at the day, when they put you in that ground, and, I, and I've been to so many funerals, I've directed so many funerals, and after they eat that chicken and macaroni and cheese, get that Hennessy, smoke a little weed, you gone, man. Off to the next one, man. Everybody is profiting off of, off the death of young black people. Everybody is profiting from it. The medical examiner, the hospitals, and the hospital profit even more. Because why? Because when you get shot and they trying to keep you alive, you ain't dead yet. They still keeping you alive by means of artificial, meaning that they can have a mechanical device on you keeping you alive, right? On a respirator or you close to death, they harvesting your organs. Taking your organs, man. Your kidneys, right? Taking your heart. And your mother and father know nothing about that. Right? But then they go sell your organs or put them right on the black market, should I say. So now your mother who don't have money. Think this over. Think this over. Your mother who don't even have money to pay for your funeral. But yet, your organs are so valuable that it's going over to somebody else on the market. Where they paying twenty five dollars and $50,000 and your mother see nothing of that. Right? Not only has she lost her son, she now his organs is being distributed to other people where they cash it in on it. Right? So you need to start thinking about this, man. Before you start going out here and talking about that you down with this set, down with that set, man, I'm telling you the real, the real story is, man, you're going to end up in the funeral home. I'm telling you. And you probably saying you ain't got nothing to live for. You got everything to live for, man. You got everything to live for. You got to understand that you matter. Just as the next man that may have an education, that may have a lot of money, and you may not attain that right now, you still matter, man. So many of our young brothers, nowadays sisters too, end up in the graveyard. So much potential. Gone, man. Some of the answers and cures that we need in our community, gone. See? 
And in what we got to do, man, we got to start uniting and realize that, man, we are fighting for the resurrection, uh, for the totality of our people. We got to understand that we are fighting for our people, man, for our very existence here. Now, I'm tired as a funeral director. Now, I mean, I mean, I don't know why other funeral directors ain't stepping up. I mean, yes, I mean, you got to why other funeral directors ain't stepping up. Why I'm the only one out there crying out in the, in the wilderness, man, trying to get you to see the reality, man. Huh? Well, I mean, well, I mean, well, I mean, do you are you just that much in love and getting in the casket? Is you just that much in love with seeing how many people going to come to your funeral? Are you just that much in love to see how many people going to sign a register book? Are you that much just in love to see how your prayer card and your program is? You must be a damn fool. You got to be a fool, man. Because once you in that casket, you ain't getting out of it. It's over. It's done. So what we going to start doing? And we out in the streets every day. We out in the streets every day. More tissues that kid. We out in the streets. We bringing caskets to the street. We bringing body bags to the streets. We bringing the van with the casket on top of it, man. Right? Some people say, why you got to be so grotesque? Why? why not? Why not? We got to do whatever it takes, man, to save the lives of our people. You even dilly and dally and pit tapping around this issue? No, man, we got to deal with the issue today. And if that means by bringing a casket on the street, so be it. I'm going to keep doing it. If that'll bring a body bag out on the street, I'm going to keep doing it. Right? I'm going to keep doing it. Long as that we got the violence that's taking place and I'm trying to save our young people, I'm going to do what I need to do what I need to do. But it ain't going to stop here. We're going to take the death from our community and we're going to bring it to the right in front of the very door of those that got the resources to help us get out of the mess we're in. Right? That's what we're going to start doing. We're going to make a reality of death a part of other people who've been living cushy, who've been living comfortably, who've been living good, and off the backs of our young people dying. Medical examiners, step up, man. You talking about you ain't part of the problem. You, I mean, you ain't part of the solution. No. Nah. This is what one of the medical examiners told me. I tried to try to tell him to get involved in the Stop the Balance campaign. He said, listen, man, the medical examiners ain't part of the um, solution. I said, you're a damn lie you ain't. You are a lie. You swans that witness and see this every day. You mean to tell me that you don't care enough about the... Oh, I, I get it, because he don't look like you. I understand. I understand he ain't from the same finance, um, ed educational background as you. I get it, right? But at the same time, you have a duty, man, that you were sworn by. Right? You have a duty. And you seeing so many of these children going to an early grave, man, when they should be going off to college and getting clothes for their graduation. I'm taking their clothes and burying them, man. Splitting them up the back to put on them. Suturing up their skin, man, to put their flesh back together. I'm the one got to take the viscera in the bag and put that back in your stomach. I'm the one got to put the skull back and suture up your head, man. I don't take no damn delight in doing that. I'm fired up, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be a change. So you rappers, I'm telling you, we calling you out, man. We're going to tear your brand down, man. I'm telling all the young people today, man, tell them, put that foolishness down, man. Don't buy another one of those records. If they telling you to kill or pick up a gun, we, we don't want that. I don't care who it is. Because you know why you should care? Because ain't none of them. Lil Wayne ain't coming to your funeral. You can forget that, right? Rick Ross ain't coming to your funeral. You can forget that, brother, right? So what we gonna do, we gonna make them feel our pain. We gonna stop supporting them. If they can't raise the level of consciousness in the minds and hearts of our people, and they knowing damn well where they come from, man, from the inner city, and now you have attained a life that's giving you luxury, man, and you gonna turn your back on our people, man, and keep giving them this filth? Nah, we coming to you. We coming to your doorsteps. We bringing body bags. We bringing caskets, man. We bringing pictures, man. We gonna let you know, man, that we feel it here in the city. We gonna bring it to your doorstep. So I just wanna appeal to the young people as I close out. I want you to really start thinking what I'm saying. I ain't here to scare you. I'm telling you the reality. See, they ain't gonna tell you the reality. I mean, it ain't all you ain't. It ain't all good, right? Cause you a shell, man. You gone, man. Right, you cut from here like that, that wide incision, right? That right here, you cut, man. Pull your, pull your flap over your chin, man. Skull is taken off. Brain is removed, stuffed with newspaper, man. See, that's the real, man. And when you love somebody unconditionally, man, you don't, you give up the secrets. 
ain't no secrets about this no more. It's all on YouTube, all on the internet on how people are bombing the day. But the fact of the matter is ain't nobody seen nothing about the young black people dying, man. I mean, everybody on street corners nowadays saying this and this. No, we try to take it to another level, man. We got to take it to another level. We tell the radio stations. We calling them out, man. Stop playing all that damnable music that's harming our people, man. Right? You got us on street. You got us on one segment that you give us one hour on Sundays to try to tell us what's going on in the community. But those 23 hours a day and those rest of the six days a week, you dumping garbage and filth in the minds of our people, man. Sending off bad frequencies and vibrations within them, man. No, we coming for you, man. We coming even if whatever it takes, we coming for you. We coming for you. So as I close out, I just want to thank you for not going that route. For those who considering that you think you may be corny and that you, you don't want to be a part of, uh, of that culture, I'm telling you, stay the course. You want the right course. Because I'm going to tell you as I close out now, we're going to be able to address the issue soon or I'm going to be addressing you later. Thank you.